in, in Esther 8.17, this was right near the end of the story when the Jews are finally going to get their victory over their enemies that were going to slaughter them and kill them. The Bible says that in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. This is what I'm talking about. So the people of the land became Jews. They weren't naturally born into that. They became a Jew. So this is the people of the land. They weren't Hebrews by their ancestry, but they became Jews. Why? Because they decided to follow the Lord. Because they saw the might and the power that the Lord had and that the Lord was the true God and that they became Jews. Now, in the Old Testament, being a Jew with that religion, with that faith, wasn't a bad thing as long as they're just following the Lord. That was the right religion. You know, people say, oh, Christianity is a new religion. You know, it's only been around for a couple thousand years. And I say, no, it's not. Maybe under the name Christianity, sure. But the religion has been around since Adam and Eve in the garden. Amen. Because it's the same Lord. It's the same God that's been around. And people have been taught to worship the one true God all throughout history. And that religion has been around. You could call it whatever you want. But that religion has been around forever. This is the oldest religion that we are practicing right now. Amen. <clears throat> but one of the reasons why I'm preaching this sermon this morning is because today we have a lot of people that try to lump Jews in with Christianity. And they, try to, they, they come up with this phrase, you know, this Judeo-Christian thing. And I'll tell you what, we are not Judeo-Christian. It's funny, we, I drive by, there's this new church, it's called New Life. New Life Church over off of uh, Long Look, where you have, there's like a whole row of, of churches kind of right next to each other. And for a long time, I think they've been sharing the church with, some, with another church. And I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on over there, but just recently they put up this sign. And they've got like three crosses, they've got like a heart, and then they have... The, the star of Remphan, I mean the star of David, right? Whatever you want to call it. So that, that Jewish star, it's like, you're supposed to be a Christian church. Why, why are you putting up a star that represents Judaism, right? Or Israel up on your sign, just broadcasting to everybody that, that you know, what are you? Are you synagogue or are you a church? Are you a Christian church or synagogue? Because I'll tell you what, the Jews, the Judaism religion, rejects Jesus Christ altogether. Right. Now, why is it that if you call it Israel, or if you call them a Jew, that Christians these days are all of a sudden going to say, Oh, I have no problem with that, but any other religion that's going to blaspheme Jesus Christ and say, Jesus Christ was not the Savior, Jesus Christ was just some man. In fact, Jesus Christ deserved to die on that cross. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't like that person very much. You, you wouldn't agree at all with that person. You wouldn't join together and say, hey, we're buddies right. with someone that believed that. But you put the stamp of Judaism, or you put the stamp of Israel on it. Now, all of a sudden, it's just fine. We started off in 1 John chapter 2. Look at verse number 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. I've heard so many people say that, oh, the Jews, they, they worship the same God we do. It's just without Jesus Christ. That they are just, it's the same thing. They, yeah, they just don't recognize Jesus as the Savior. As if, first of all, that's some trivial thing, right? That like not recognizing Christ as the Savior is just, oh, it's just some detail. Hello, this is what our entire religion is on, is the fact that Christ paid for our sins. I mean, he's the Savior. He's God in the flesh. But the statement alone isn't even true. They do not worship the same God. They do not worship the Lord. The Bible says right here that they're liars if they deny that Jesus is the Christ. Now, I'll tell you what, out of all the religions of the world, Judaism is the one religion, the one religion that's going to say there is a Savior coming from God. 
And Jesus is not that Savior. And Jesus was, you know, I mean, when, when you really get, and they don't like to talk about this very much because Christianity is so popular. And they don't want to just offend tons of Christians. But all throughout history, and even now, and I've talked to a couple, if you could even get someone who's Jewish to talk to you at the door, good luck with that. Yeah. That is extremely difficult. Now look, we try to get them saved. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. That's why we're out soul winning. I don't look at someone's skin color or where I think they're from or their accent and say, nope, I'm not going to give you the gospel. Of course not. God loves them. God wants them all to get saved. But we're dealing with reality here. We're dealing with a religion that teaches people that Christ is not the Savior. That Christ, you know, he, he claimed to be the Savior, but he's not the Savior. Now think about this. How would you think about somebody... I mean, there's plenty of antichrists out there even today. What do you think about the guys that say, I'm the second coming of Jesus Christ? They're wicked. They're abominable, right? Well, this is the way that the Jews think about Jesus Christ. It's the same exact way that they picture him. Now, Jesus Christ, we know, is the Savior. But this is how they think of Christ. So, they would have no reason to yoke up with Christians other than just for their own benefit, for some reason. You know, if they could use you to, to, to get ahead. But the Bible says here in verse 23, I don't want to get too far off on, on the point I was trying to make. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. They don't have the Father. They don't have the Father without the Son. The Bible says here, they can't have the Father without the Son. Because if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. Amen. You cannot have one without the other. They're inseparable. And if you, if you claim to worship God the Father but not God the Son, you don't have either of them.